Hi, this is Pratima and you are watching Planet Physiology. Today we are going to study mechanism of hormone action. As we have seen in previous video, hormones are the chemical messengers secreted by endocrine glands. They are released into circulation and act on distant target tissues. Now, as they are present in circulation, potentially they can exert their effect on each and every cell of the body but this doesn't usually happen for example fsh and lh act only on gonads or parathormone on bones kidneys and git why can't they act on all tissues this is because being chemicals hormones have specific receptors to bind and obviously the tissues that possess the receptors will respond to the hormones so hormones always exert their actions through receptors and the type of receptors will decide the action of the hormone so let's study about the hormone receptors first receptors are protein in nature and are highly specific to the specific hormone these are dynamic in nature that is their number in the target tissue is not fixed receptors show either up regulation or down regulation Increase in number of receptors in response to hormone is called as upregulation while decrease in number is called as downregulation Their location in the cell membrane depends on the chemical nature of the hormone to which they respond Receptors for hydrophilic hormones like proteins and peptide hormones as well as for catecholamines are located in the cell membrane These membrane receptors are usually G protein coupled receptors that is they are attached to the g protein g protein has three subunits alpha beta and gamma alpha subunit has binding site for gdp or gtp and also has intrinsic gtps activity so alpha subunit acts as transducer there are three subtypes of alpha subunits alpha s s stands for stimulatory alpha i i for inhibitory and alpha q activation of alpha s stimulates the enzyme adenylyl cyclase while activation of alpha i inhibits the enzyme adenylyl cyclase alpha q activates membrane bound phospholipases like phospholipase c details we shall study later in the video Receptors for lipid soluble hormones like steroid hormones are located within the cytoplasm and are called as cytoplasmic receptors while receptors for thyroid hormones are located within the nucleus of the target tissue and called as nuclear receptors Binding of hormone to its receptor forms hormone receptor complex This complex brings about changes in the activity of target cell through various mechanisms Target cells may show changes in the membrane permeability or activation or inhibition of G proteins, intracellular enzymes or specific genes. Let's study this mechanism in detail starting with protein hormones. So as we have just seen being a large hydrophilic molecules protein or peptide hormones act through membrane receptors. Once they form hormone receptor complex they activate another molecules either in the cell membrane or within the cytoplasm which trigger the cellular response this intracellular messengers are called as second messengers so hormone is referred as first messenger and the intracellular trigger is called as second messenger so second messengers are intracellular signaling molecules released by the cell in response to extracellular signaling molecule that is the first messenger or hormone they trigger the target cell response to the hormone an important feature of this system is that second messengers are usually coupled downstream to multiple cyclic kinase cascades which greatly amplify the strength of the original hormonal signals they distribute the signal to the appropriate target within the cell and help in feedback regulation of the cellular response as well examples of second messenger include cyclic amp cyclic gmp calcium ions inositol triphosphate and all these are hydrophilic cytoplasmic second messenger 
देन डायसेलग्लिसेरॉल इज हाइड्रोफोबिक सेकेंड मैसेजर नाइट्रिक ऑक्साइड कार्बन मोनऑक्साइड फॉल इन द कैटेगरी ऑफ गैसेस जस्ट एन एडिशनल इंफॉर्मेशन हियर सेकेंड मैसेजेस वी आर डिस्कवर्ड बाई अर्ल सुदरलैंड जूनियर फॉर विच ही वन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी वन नोवेल प्राइज इन फिजियोलॉजी और मेडिसिन ही फाउंड दैट हिपिनेफ्रीन अलोन कैनोट इनिशिएट ग्लाइकोजिनोलाइसिस इन हिपेटोसाइट्स बट इट मस्ट ट्रिगर साइक्लिक ए एम पी टू एक्सर्ट दिस एक्शन लेटर द डिटेल मेकैनिज्म ऑफ दिस प्रोसेस वॉज वर्कड आउट बाय मार्टिन रॉडबेल एंड अल्फ्रेड गिलमन हु ऑल्सो वन नाइनटीन नाइनटी फोर नोवेल प्राइज फॉर द सेम ओके लेट स्टडी द मेकैनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ सेकेंड मैसेजर सिस्टम इन डिटेल स्टार्टिंग विथ साइक्लिक एम पी एस सेकेंड मैसेजर फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड दिस डायग्राम here is the cell membrane showing lipid bilayer this is the hormone receptor which is coupled with g protein g protein has alpha beta and gamma subunit here is the membrane associated enzyme adenylyl cyclase which acts as primary effector hormone molecule is represented in red color binding of hormone with its receptor causes formation of hormone receptor complex and activates g protein where gdp on the alpha subunit is replaced by gtp as a result alpha subunit separates from the receptor and moves within the cell membrane to activate adenylyl cyclase activated adenylyl cyclase converts atp in the cytoplasm to cyclic amp which in turn activates protein kinase activated protein kinase causes phosphorylation of proteins and depending upon the type of proteins which get phosphorylated cellular response will be seen some types of protein kinases can migrate to nucleus and activate specific genes to produce proteins and accordingly cellular response is seen thus in this case cyclic amp acts as second messenger that triggers the cascade of reaction to initiate the cellular response so please note here we are talking about stimulatory that is alpha s type of g protein now the response depends on the type of kinase being activated kinase is usually act by phosphorylation of tyrosine threonine or serine residues in proteins based on the type of kinase and the proteins being phosphorylated cell shows the changes in its metabolism permeability or genetic activity till now more than 300 kinases have been identified cyclic amp may activate phosphatase which in turn leads to dephosphorylation of the protein so cellular signaling pathways that regulate the process of phosphorylation and dephosphorylation of protein is called as phosphate timer the action of cyclic amp in the cell is terminated by degradation of cyclic amp to 5 amp by the enzyme phosphodiesterase signaling cascade can be terminated by activation of specific phosphatases leading to dephosphorylation of the proteins many hormones act through cyclic amp second messenger system which include gnrh crh that is corticotropin releasing hormone fsh lh acth adh and glucagon now in the same way if the hormone receptor complex stimulates inhibitory alpha unit that is alpha i unit of g protein coupled receptor adenylyl cyclase is inhibited and the formation of cyclic amp is reduced the hormones which act by inhibiting cyclic amp formation include action of norepinephrine via alpha 2 receptors as well as action of somatostatin now coming to cyclic gmp as second messenger The process is exactly same as that of cyclic AMP only instead of adenylyl cyclase here the enzyme is guanylyl cyclase which causes formation of cyclic GMP leading to activation of protein kinase or phosphatase hormones like atrial natriuretic peptide and nitric oxide act through cyclic GMP second messenger The toxin released by bacteria E coli also act via cyclic GMP second messenger system. 
The next important second messenger system is membrane phospholipids. In this case, G protein has alpha Q subunit and hence hormone receptor complex activates the enzyme phospholipase C. Phospholipase C is attached to the alpha subunit and causes hydrolysis of the membrane phospholipid phosphoinositol diphosphate that is PIP2. The product being formed are diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate which are also abbreviated as DAG and IP3. IP3 acts on endoplasmic reticulum to release its calcium ions and thus elevates intracellular calcium concentration. Calcium ions in turn bind with calcium binding proteins like calmodulin to exert its action. It may activate calcium calmodulin dependent kinases to exert the action. DAG activates protein kinase C leading to phosphorylation of proteins which mediate cellular response. Hormones like ADH, noradrenaline and angiotensin 2 act via phospholipid second messenger system. Some hormones like TRH cause activation of phospholipase A2 which converts membrane phospholipids into arachidonic acid which is then converted to prostaglandin, prostacycline, thromboxane or leukotriene. These products then mediate the cellular response. So membrane phospholipids second messenger system either will act via DAG, IP3 or arachidonic acid. Okay. Till now we have seen that hormone receptor complex acts through G protein. But some peptide hormones do not require G protein for signal transduction. In such cases, hormone receptors themselves have intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity. Formation of hormone receptor complex leads to autophosphorylation of tyrosine residues within the receptors as well as cytoplasmic proteins, which in turn leads to phosphorylation of proteins. This activates enzymes or may induce genetic transcription translation process and initiate various cellular reactions. Hormones acting via this mode are insulin, insulin-like growth factor 1, insulin-like growth factor 2 and other growth factors like platelet-derived growth factor, endothelial growth factor and monocyte colony stimulating factor. In another variety of hormone receptor, the hormone receptor complex exposes the intracellular tyrosine kinase binding site. So the receptor itself has the binding site for tyrosine kinase. Once this binding site is open, cytoplasmic kinase called as Janus kinase binds to this site and gets activated. Activation of Janus kinase phosphorylates STAT protein. STAT stands for signal transducers and activators of transcription. So it is nothing but a transcription factor. STAT now migrates to the nucleus and causes activation of genes. Since this pathway involves activation of Janus kinase and STAT proteins, this is called as JAK-STAT pathway. Growth hormone and prolactin act via this pathway. Now the last type of second messenger, the calcium ions. In this case, hormone receptor complex opens calcium channels either in the cell membrane or in the cell organelles leading to calcium influx and rise in intracellular calcium concentration. In some tissues, release of calcium from cell organelles trigger opening of calcium channels in the cell membrane leading to calcium influx. This is known as store operated calcium influx. Calcium ions then bind with calcium binding proteins like calmodulin, troponin C or calbindin within the cell and initiate cellular response. It may be in the form of activation of myosin light chain kinase leading to phosphorylation of myosin or phosphorylation of any other intracellular protein. The hormone like gastrin acts via calcium as second messenger system. Now coming to the mechanism of action of steroid hormones. As these are lipid soluble hormones, they can easily diffuse through the cell membrane. Hence, their receptors are located within the cytoplasm. Normally, these receptors are bound to heat shock protein 
which covers the dna binding domain of the receptor concentration of these proteins increases in response to heat and stress and they protect the cells during such stressful situations hence they are called as heat shock proteins now formation of hormone receptor complex changes the conformation and releases heat shock protein from the receptor now this complex moves to the nucleus and binds with the dna to activate specific genes leading to transcription and translation to form new proteins now since this is lengthy process action of steroid hormones is appreciated after several hours as the cellular response is mediated by activation of genes such action is known as genomic action so action of hormone via activation of genes is known as genomic action steroid hormones also possess some membrane receptors which act through second messengers like cyclic amp or calcium ions so cellular response of steroid hormones through membrane receptors is rapid and is known as non genomic action now the last part of the session mechanism of action of thyroid hormones now this is very similar to that of genomic action of steroid hormones only difference is that for thyroid hormone the receptors are present within the nucleus itself so hormone receptor complex is formed within the nucleus which then activates specific region of the dna and initiate the process of transcription translation and protein synthesis so as we have finished the topic let us revise the important points hormones always act through receptors protein peptide hormones and catecholamines act via membrane receptors most of which are g protein coupled receptors formation of hormone receptor complex activates second messenger system in this case which in turn initiate cascade of events leading to changes in the cellular activity second messengers include cyclic amp cyclic gmp membrane phospholipids like dag ip3 and calcium ions they cause activation of kinases and the cellular response is decided by the type of protein kinase being activated steroid hormones exhibit genomic action via cytoplasmic receptors which promote protein synthesis and non genomic action is mediated through membrane receptors and second messengers thyroid hormones act via nuclear receptors and lead to protein synthesis that's all for today thank you for watching and see you in the next video if you enjoy my presentations press the like button and share it with your friends for more such videos subscribe my channel and click the bell icon thank you for watching and see you in the next video